Okay, so our T um, is something last week was renew your minds and be filled with the Spirit. Renew your minds and be filled with the Spirit. And today's emphasis is on this theme you have left your first love. It's going to be a number of uh, uh, conversations, song, prayer, um, and even testimony spoke about love and passion. Hold on to a love for us yesterday. And, um, and here's my team today, you have left your first love. But we see how the God is guiding us as we share uh, today. Text number from Roman from Revelation chapter 2. This is wonderful. Father, we ask for your guidance. We ask for your help. You will be need your Holy Spirit, Lord. Take control and speak to us. Use us to the vessel. Today, we can only push back on Satan's thoughts and plans in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, God, we cast ourselves on his leadership, on his guidance. Speak, God, we pray. Honor your name, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 4 says, To the angel, the leader, the pastor of the church of Ephesus, write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. Can you imagine after all of these good descriptions of, of a church life? or the state of a body of believers towards God, towards the plots of, of Satan and men. And Christ spoke in detail, I know all of these things. I know your labor, your works, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. I know, I'm aware. And this is my report card on you. You have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and you found them out. You found out that they were liars. And you have persevered and have patience. You stayed the course and you demonstrated patience, or you are demonstrating patience, and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Is this something good? Is a good word. Amen. And you say like that, the church say amen. You say amen. Then he said, continued. And this Christ speaking here um, to John to write these churches here, the church of Ephesus. He said, nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent, turn around and do the first works. And I, I, heard, I hear no amen, I imagine that this part is troubling you. You have left your first love. Remember those, remember therefore, sorry, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. The Passion Translation puts the last uh, verse four and piece of verse five this way. But I have this against you. You have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. You have abandoned the passionate love you had for me at the beginning. The words then, you do a number of things, but they lack that passionate love you had for me when we first met when the relationship began. Then think about how far you have fallen. Repent, which means turn around and do the works of love you did at first. 
do the works of love with their head. And Phyllis, let me be talking about seeking God for revival. Let me be talking about yielding to the Holy Spirit. We talk about positioning ourselves under the rule of the Spirit. We are talking about prayer and giving ourselves to pray. All revivals in this history began with the praying. The filling of the Holy Spirit came, the saints were the upper room, praying, talking to God. Christ said, I see and I identify a number of things with you, but I'm not seeing the passion, the prayer, the relationship, the interaction we once had when we first met. I don't know if I have even opened tell this. Um, when things are going so good and you're quiet, you can travel in. I know Bishop, you're not looking about the longest Spanish here, Bishop. <laughs> um, you're, you're not talking, not complicated. You're in the house that there's no complication. Now, I heard about this, eh? I heard about this. That's a similar death, a similar death. You keep on talking. You keep on talking. If I want to just be quiet. No. But there is something we know. When the passion has gone, all the things, it can be cooking, washing, uh, doing everything you're doing. But there is something lacking. That relationship, that aliveness, is that word, that was there in the beginning, has gone cold. How do you respond to it? How do you know? How do you set up? How do we strike up? How, how, how do we strike up relationship with someone who we first know? First time we meet that person. When love comes, there is a uh, continuum talk. Just keep on talking. I mentioned some time ago if, 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 uh, yeah, if, uh, if, sorry, if the Wi Fi calls for 10, 15, 20 minutes, there's a sense of, oh my God, the world is, is falling. Because you want to communicate, you want to share with, with friends. And if there's a loved one, you want to share. But now you can have like 10, 15, 20 seconds of no Wi Fi. And now days could pass, weeks could pass, and I'm afraid to say months could pass, and we didn't have a real close time out with God. It's just like, bless me tonight, in case I die in my sleep, I'm going to heaven. Oh, bless the Lord, guide my steps. That's not, that's not it. That's not it. That passionate love that spoke to relationship, where there's communication, where there is there, there's, there's a sense of love, the sense of even laughter, even Lord. <laughs> Happy laughing, Lord. Happy laughing. Our Father laughs in the earth. Amen. Read the scripture. Our Father sings. He sings over us. Amen. He loves relationship. Yes. And when there is no relationship, our Father feels it. Amen. Why isn't he talking to me? Why isn't she talking to me? Remember how it used to be? When you get up and you just want to talk, and I hold him, you just talk it, talk it. If revival is to come, we have to reposition ourselves. We have to renew our minds. We have to rethink our positions. We have to return to our first love. The must be passion. How do we heal? Why is healing to the Lord so difficult? Why is praying? We know prayer is essential. But why do we find prayer to be a task? And we measure now by minutes. Oh, or hours. We measure by minutes. Why is that a task? How do we find it difficult to be in God's presence? Remember how the Member of staff before before I left office the last two three years I had a, some new staff 
and uh, one of them in turn this guy, nice guy. Fit up all his name because these things put him online. Um, there's always a willing chap ready to go, uh, ready to respond, ready to come and discuss his ideas. So. I never recognized that he had some distance between us until on my retirement. During the staff gathering, he said, Mr. Mears, I'm not sure if you recognize, but I always get a little long arm between us alone. Yes, he said, I have a long arm. And he said, um, so for most of my last three years, the long arm, because I didn't know you nor trust you. He said, um, but he, he was a, a, a junior manager before they did uh, just a long side. He said, he said um, I just knew you as the guy in the floor there who seemed very serious in their own business. I said, like, what do you call me smiling? He said, yeah, you smile sometimes, but never trust your smile, do you? He said, I kept on arms then from you. He said, until I began to walk with you, I discovered that you're real. And that's that's right here. You came at arm's length from God. We are afraid to approach him. You know why? Because Satan peddles and making us feel guilty and shame, a shame of ourselves. Guilt and shame are two of the 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 the, the abadastri that we're looking for. Them. Two of the wicked tools Satan uses against us. So we're afraid. We're afraid to come into God's presence because we feel guilty. We're afraid to come into His presence because there's a sense of shame. As I can tell you, as as um, one who's been working with people for years. I, I know that people have a, as one person said, I don't get too close to bosses. I hate the word, hate the word bosses. I don't get too close to them. Because they're not, not your friend. They do a presence. And if we have the same attitude or children, I don't come close to father. No? Because I don't like my father. I didn't even know my father. You know, my own father's story. I didn't even know my own father. And fathers have a certain way of abandoning his family. Uh, so I don't do fathers. How do I respond to my heavenly father? How do we engage God who presents himself to us as our heavenly Abba father? When we have issues with father, when we have issues with authority, when we have issues with his love, we don't know his love. Then how can we experience revival? How can we yield to someone who we always suspect he's in one of the third, the third heavens? Who we don't to trust. We read his word, yes, but we didn't put trust him because we also read how he brought down fire and brimstone and, 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 and Sodom and Gomorrah and how he his, 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 his rod made just um, unleash against people. So, how do I relate to such a God? And then we say that turn the spotlight on ourselves and begin to feel guilty and ashamed. So I cannot be in his presence. Remember Peter when Peter first met? I talked about Peter just now. When he first recognized the fact that the big harvest of fish, and Peter recognized this must, this is holy God. Yeah. He said, Depart from me, I'm an holy man. Yeah. I can't be in your presence. Brothers and say, Lord, I love to be in your presence. And you take that song or songs like that. But the guilt and shame, Satan tells because we can't be on the level. Because I know what I did this morning. I know what I did yesterday. I know what I have in my heart. I know all of the weaknesses. Do you know that God wants you to come with your weaknesses? Because he cares. Let's look, at, let's look at Peter. Let's look at Peter. Peter, in the day of the um, 
Pentecost, the book of Acts. Peter stood and he spoke. I told I had that passage when um, it was very long, so I couldn't put it all. Chapter 2, the whole chapter, if you read it. The word in the upper room, obeying Christ, Christ said, You wait together, the Holy Spirit will come. The word in the upper room, and in chapter 2, the Spirit of God came, and the saints who were there began feeling and seeing the flames of fire, the power of the anointed presence of the Holy Spirit began speaking in tongues and began ministering in tongues to the many people who were there um, who came to the Passover gathering, um, Pentecost gathering, and they were all in a place of people say, these guys are drunk. We hear them speaking to us the wonders of God in our own language, but some began to mock and say, is the wine, see what the, the wine they brought that this morning have them all tripping. And Peter stood up and he said, these are not drunk men as you suppose. It's totally to be drunk. And he preached a word. Going to scripture, he preached a word to all those thousands who were there. And under the power of the Holy Spirit, and how many thousands we don't know, what we do know of the account is that 3,000 gave their hearts to the Lord and were baptized. Wow! Amen. What the power of the anointing can do. Amen. Why would they want to avoid and keep the sun from the Holy Spirit filling us up? See what the anointing can do. We cannot do spiritual work without the Spirit of God. What are we doing is we cannot work. We'll be like in Ephesus, plenty of labor, plenty of stuff, plenty of things that, yeah, 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 but we don't have the revival fire, the revival passion. We don't have the first love at stirring up and at work in you because you did some distancing. Repent and return. But here is Peter. And if we go on the book of Acts, Peter, in fire speaking, he was sent to the house of He spoke to the Gentiles, the first Jewish leader to speak to the Gentiles. And yes, they were saved, and he baptized the whole household. And Peter moving through the, 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 the um, known world then, but the, under the power of the anointed, transforming lives. He wrote two books, the Bible scholars believe three books he wrote, no first second like Peter and the New Testament, and the book of Mark has been accounted to be Peter's writing, but it was recorded by Mark. So Peter was narrating the experiences. Mark was not there as a disciple, knowing all the things that happened, all the, all the, all the account of Christ's power and miraculous hope. Peter told Mark, and you can see if you read Mark and you read the first second letters of Peter, you can see some similar stuff. That's why the Bible scholars um, believe that Mark who became a companion of Peter's book. But here's this Peter, no common one who's writing the word of God, the anointing so alive. He was preaching, he was seeing life transform, he was baptizing, he was writing the New Testament, not even knowing it. But remember Peter's beginning. Peter was the best of guys. Now this even not from the time when he was fishing himself and his brother. It was it was at the time when he was a follower of Christ. Peter was present but seeing all of the miraculous things Christ did. He was present when Lazarus came from the uh, life of the grave. He saw when Christ fed the multitudes twice with a little bit of food. He was present on the Mount of Transfiguration when Christ was transfigured, when the Lord of the Lord pulled back the veil, the human veil, and Christ stood glowing in his glory. And there was uh, Elijah and Moses, and Peter was there. He was the one who wanted to build three tabernacles. He was the one who was very much there 
Christ. And then something happened. Something happened. He drifted from his first love. He drifted from his first love. In the, the Luke chapter 22, Christ said this to him. And remember Christ had renamed him Peter. But now Christ was speaking to him as called him Simon. He said, Simon, Simon. Because Satan demanded to have you, this is the English standard version. He demanded to have you, that means he begged earnestly to have you, that he might sift you like the wheat. Imagine that. Man of the story of Job, right? Yeah. So the Old Testament, Job, where Satan told God, he is serving you because you have a hedge around him. Remove the hedge and he will look with your face and close you. God said he will not still say here. And the God allowed him to, to use his attacks. But note that Satan could not touch Job without God's permission. He could not touch Job without God's permission. And here is Christ giving some insight, Peter. Satan has spoken to the Father and he has earnestly requested. He was like insisting that you would fail, that you are here for another cause. He wants to sift you as feet. And he is saying that the essence, Peter, the Father gave him permission. He said, but I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. You know the self beat? How the self beat? You take the wheat on the, on, the, on the ground, you be the hard, compact, wooden, I mean, wooden ground. And of course, that develop further on before they have the big machinery, um, and industrial machines are uh, exciting these days. But we bring the wheat into the stretcher uh, floor. And, oh, remember Gideon, who was hiding there, such a floor, except for the wheat. But they put the wheat in the ground and they will eat it. Yeah. I can't see all the pieces. This is not good on this mass thing. <laughs> I said eat it and I smile because I remember in Tobago some years ago um, this little girl who didn't like me at all. And I um, had a play with her. And she's so the bread, she told me, and the baby got one. See, me and go tell the mommy, the mommy go out, beat you. <laughs> I said, well, you don't like me, too. <laughs> See, then she's my friend, and she said, me go there, we did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> my friend, up to now, up to now, be your friends. And I like to use that against her. But they will go to the stretching floor and take the same seeds of, 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 of wheat and will. Beat it, beat it if you want, to separate the stalk from the, from the, the beat itself. And we beat and beat and beat. Then when a chance time comes, like the Gideon said, because the other the for the signs are looking, they will bring it out to the wind and they will straight out to get the, they call it willow wind, where the, where the wind will take the shaft and they will keep the, the wind. But it's not, this, this, is, this is the last part of it. But the real part that Christ is speaking to, but Peter, he wants to take you aside, teach you. So when we read about Peter denying Christ three times, we disconnect that denial from what Christ said to him before. 
there was a spiritual side to that physical situation. But the spiritual happened before this happened. Christ told Peter, Satan asked earnestly of the Father to sit he was meat and he was given permission. Here was Peter under pressure. His time in Christ was being judged and being accused and getting ready to be murdered through his eviction. He said, Be you one of them? Peter said, Not me. Someone said, Peter lost nerve. He, he was there, he saw the miracles, he saw the power of God working in Christ, he saw the dead uh, arising as we said, when he was in the transfiguration as we said, he saw all of the glory of God. But now under the pressure, when Satan was beating him as wheat, he lost nerve. He said, don't leave me. Not me. I don't. Drifted far from his first love. In fact, in Luke chapter 21, he said, when Christ spoke with his crucifixion, he said, Let not, I will die for you. Or more than that, I will die for you. <clears throat> Sorry. I will do it. He was all clear that he was passionate about the Savior. He was one who was ready for revival, ready for everything. But Christ knew. That we can have the best intentions, we can have the best training, we can have the best history, but if we don't have God's best, the Holy Spirit, we will lose nerve tomorrow. We will lose nerve today. And deny our God and drift our first love without the Lord. Christ said, But I have prayed for you. That you will not lose faith. Amen. I have prayed to you that you will not lose faith. While I was studying this word and pondering before the Lord, I got a deep sense of revelation knowledge of the word that Satan asked God to sit as he's here. To sit in this church. And some strange things happened among us over the last year or two. I think that God knew that we were going on the discussion floor. And it's going to be attacked. But say they can go only this far and no further Amen. because he cannot touch us without first consulting with Father and getting Father's permission. And Christ, who is our intercessor, interceding for us, he said, as he said to Peter. I have prayed for you that you will not lose faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said to Peter, when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. When you have returned your first love. When you have returned in the power of the Holy Spirit, when you have returned with a resolve, but it's not by might or by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit working in me. It's not by willpower. It's not about what I can say. Because it's St. Peter who said, No, I will not pray for you. And read it in Luke and in Mark 21 22. Luke. I will not pray for you. I will die for you. Same one who said, I don't think you're going. Yeah. But here we see the book of Acts of Peter under the anointed, turning the world 
upside down. Yes. And writing counsel, the riches of God's grace, the power of the life the believer is called to be a partaker, as he said, of the, the, the nature of God and the inheritance God has given to us. We have all we need for life and for godliness. There was a teacher under the anointed. When you return, strengthen your brethren. Because you have returned. You have returned. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. Remember though that he just study rest after that for the study rest of keeping his distance of Christ. He still that rest. When the when the Marys went to look for to bound the body of Christ after his crucifixion, that was said in Mark 16. And he said, This is the wealthy Peter's writing through Mark. He met, he said, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, that was an angel, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. He said to them, Do not be alarmed. You see, Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, he has risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. Go tell the disciples and Peter. Christ is going to reinstate Peter. He stood the rest of falling under guilt and shame under Satan's attack when he was being sifted at his feet and lost love and that guilt and shame as we said can keep us social distancing, spiritual distancing away from God that can keep us but God here through the angels or giving angel instruction go tell my disciples, his disciples and Peter coming to see you. And in John 21, we read about Peter. In fact, Peter had really entered some distance in because we read in chapter 21 of St. John or 22. Peter, after Christ had been them twice, uh, post his resurrection, Peter uh, and seven months, Peter said, listen, I go in, I go in fishing. I go back, I go back fishing. And they all said, we'll come with you. We did. They went out. The Bible said they spent the whole night fishing. And they bought nothing. And then Jesus came. When they were coming in, they saw the stranger in the show. And he said, friends, do you have any meat? No. So I said, this is the Lord or not? Peter said, it's time. Peter put on his robe and jumped out of the boat. And this time he didn't say the path for me. He said, I'm coming to the bus. And when they came, they discovered he already said, some food. Christ said, Bobby, you fish through it on the ground. He said, we have to put your net. You understand? When they cast your net, they caught 153 fish. And that's when John realized, he's the Lord. He said, bring some of the fish you have. That's, that's, they have some breakfast being prepared by Christ. And we said that he loves us and he laughs and he sings over us. He prepares breakfast for us. Amen. 
Pickles breakfast. I'm glad you were eating. Try to ask me to eat a lot of something. One of these. You know, they pressed me after three times. Until all the rest. Try to feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. I have not denounced you. I have reinstated you. You need now to have the power of the Holy Spirit. Because after that destruction said, go and meet. And you need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that nerve you lost never come again. That denial will be made. In fact, Peter refused to die in the Christ. That was crucified. Peter was all Peter was in prison and he was not mistaken. Remember that? Yeah. Between prison uh, prison officers. And, and, and the Lord said an angel came to come. What transpired in Peter's life after what they shifted? I don't have the question. Yeah, let me go. Because here will Guys who were sincere and no doubt genuine, but without the drifted from their first love and without the anointing of the Spirit of God as a leader. So it's like until now, you've been attacking me and by extension, my family and our church, church family, and sincere. But look through the attacks, discover there is some sense of Guilt, shame, misguided. Other things of intimidation, lies, and deception. It's bringing guilt and shame. If we can't approach God, we're not pleasing our Father. To never see the state. After denying Christ, how can I approach Him? Christ came to reinstate relationship. Fellowship to give the appointed and change things. More talk about Peter's life. The see how God transforms. If you feel as though you are being sifted as meat, be assured, be very, very sure. Know this for certain. Christ has already prayed for you and He is praying for you that you will not lose faith. Goes on when you have been restored, strengthened, Richard. Let us remove ourselves from bringing shame and guilt on people. Let us remove ourselves from judging people. Let's judge ourselves before the Lord as being loved by Him. None of us here have done as bad as Peter did. And not only bad, it's, been, it's, it's permission. He's drifted because he was given permission. God said, we're giving permission. As Joel was giving permission. As as Sachin was giving permission to test Joel. But not all God restores. In Joel's life, Peter's life, to change the challenge of this. It's what they want. Somebody says of living in sin and how we feel that God can't forgive something because some of the past we are it's not sure what those in the present, those in the future, all of those things lie some hell to bring guilt, shame, and condemnation. Take me back to the garden, lead me back to the moment I Hurt your voice, take me back to communion. Lead me back to the moment I saw your face, and it was all oh so simple, it was easy to love. 
Where the death is, come back to life.